Good morning all, it's Rod with MarineHowTo.com. We're in the shop this morning and I uh, get this question quite frequently. Can I start my boat or use my windlass or use my thruster with my lithium iron phosphate battery? And the answer to that is, well, it depends. <laughs> it's complicated. Most lithium iron phosphate batteries up till re pretty recently were designed for deep cycle use only, meaning they don't want the inrush current that you get when you use a starter motor, which I have right here on the bench. Let me walk through what we've got today and I'm going to show you a few things. I'm going to show you how you can test inrush current easily and inexpensively without having to spend a thousand bucks on a fluke clamp meter. And how we're going to do that, the battery right here, a customer destroyed this battery right here. Let me uh, aim it over there. So this battery with a 120 amp rated BMS was purchased off Amazon back in, uh, oh, I don't know, 2017 or so. And the customer decided that he had a racing sailboat and he wanted lightweight in the bow. So he thought, well, 100 amp hour, it says it's a direct replacement for lead acid. So he bought it and it worked great for a couple weeks. Went out one weekend, anchored, no problem. A couple weeks later, all of a sudden the battery wasn't working. So he brought it to me and we tried everything we could from outside the box. And sure enough, the BMS was completely dead. So what we had to do was surgically open the battery, just like Will Prowse does. We had to cut the battery open, which ruined the case. And if you look on the bottom here, the thing was glued into the case so bad that, I mean, this took me over an hour to get this adhesive off. It was like 5200 kind of stuff. It was awful. Um, and I was going to rebuild the battery. And this is the new BMS that we had for it. But uh, in the meantime, the customer just went out and bought a new battery. So I still have this thing kicking around the shop. Uh, anyway, that's what can happen. You can kill your BMS. And the reason for that is pretty simple. These little, these little things here, the black squares on that circuit board, are called FETs or MOSFETs. Uh, those are the switches that enable the charging or not non or discharging or not charging this also balances the cells but all that current from your starter motor or your windlass has to go through those fets now this is a very tiny 100 amp bms that came out of a very early battery off of amazon today they're bigger but they still if it says don't start your engine with it don't do it trust me. okay so uh So what we have here is a starter motor. This is 1kW, or 1,000 watts. Uh, it's for a Westerbeek two-cylinder. And, of course, the way that we would do it in the field typically is just to use this fluke clamp meter. And we would uh, set it to inrush. You can see that I'll press the inrush button. And then we can clamp it around that cord. And as we can see, that was 390 amps. Now, I usually would do this a number of times to get the highest number because the highest number is what your battery is going to see eventually. Now, keep in mind that every time a starter motor starts, the, the inrush is not going to be exactly the same. The reason for that is this motor stops in different places when it's spinning, and those different positions require different current to start at every time. So it depends where it is in relationship to the magnets and all that kind of stuff. But basically you do this two or three, four, maybe five times. And then that will uh, tell you what the, the current is across the shunt. So what, what I'm doing today is showing you guys how to do this inexpensively. I'm trying to save you some money. And I'm going to move this in a little bit closer so that we can see the meters here. Hopefully you can see the screens on the meters. As we can see, I have the, uh, the red on the, on, on the uh, battery side of the shunt and the negative of, of the test lead on the starter motor side of the shunt. So 
or the, what we call the load side. And I'm using a voltmeter here to measure, so a shunt, first of all, let me back that up a bit. A shunt, everybody thinks it measures voltage drop. Actually, it measures, I mean, everybody thinks a shunt measures current, which it does, but it only does that with a meter that knows the calibrated voltage drop across the shunt. So a shunt really measures voltage drop from here to here. Right in the middle is a, these calibrated resistors. So this shunt is 500 amps, rated 500 amps continuous at a 50 millivolt drop. That means at 500 amps of current, there's a 50 millivolt drop between here and here. 0 0.050 volts, right? So nobody, are, I've not seen anybody on YouTube show this trick, but it's a trick we've been using for years because shunts are cheap. I can carry one in my tool bag. I can carry a jumper and just put it into the system anywhere I want and I can measure the voltage spike that's created with the, uh, the inrush. So you need a fast voltage meter. That's the first thing you need. I have this Walmart one. It will not work for this. And I'll, maybe I'll show you that in a bit. This is called a Mushi meter. This is a Bluetooth uh, voltmeter that plugs into your, can, you can use on your iPhone or iPad. Actually, I should get the iPad down so that we can show that. <laughs> I guess I wasn't totally prepared. But anyway, let me just show you this first. We're plugged into the Fluke 179. This is a pretty affordable Fluke meter that is actually fast enough to capture the inrush. It's not as fast as the 289, but it's pretty fast. So I have it set to millivolt. We're going to set it to min, and it's going to capture and hold the, the uh, peak here. Ready? So let me back, back up a bit and explain something. So this is a 500 amp shunt. If we divide that by 100 amps, that means every 100 amps of drop is 50 millivolts. I mean, sorry, 100 millivolts. So if 100 millivolts represents 500 amps, 54 millivolts represents 540 amps. So this 1,000 watt motor will apply 540 amp load to the battery or to the BMS, to those little FETs that I showed you, these things. That's what's going to see the 540 amps. And many, many FETs are not uh, what they call avalanche robust. The, the BMS is coming out of China these days are far better than they were 8 or 10 years ago. And they're getting better every day. We use JK BMSs here when we build our own batteries, which is what this one is here. Good quality BMS. So basically, that's all you got to do. You just, and most boats already have a shunt installed. So just use the existing shunt, it's already there. Unless you need to measure a different circuit, like if your windlass or your thruster does not have a shunt, then, you know, for a thruster, you're gonna want like a thousand amp shunt though, because once you get about 500 amps, the accuracy of this is no longer all that good, but we're just trying to use this as a rough guide. So anyway, let me, uh, let me unplug this, the Fluke 179. Plug it into the Fluke 289. And this one's a little bit easier. Shit, my fucking phone. Alarm. So the line that we're going to be looking for here is down here. The bottom one. So I've got to set to, uh, whoop, I got to set that to millivolt DC and do it. Sorry, my bad. Because we're measuring the voltage drop from here to here, so we want to be set to millivolt. So now it's set to that. 554. So again, 540 amps. So these two are in pretty good agreement. Let me do it again. I'll restart this. Well, I don't know what the hell happened. Five hundred ten or five, uh, five hundred twenty amps, roughly. Again, five hundred twenty. Three hundred. 
390, that was similar to what we got with the flute clamp meter. But you can see how when you do this each time, it comes up a little bit different. That's why you want to do it a number of times and take your highest reading. That's, that's the reading that the battery will eventually see. This guy got away with it for a couple weeks with that battery. But uh, you want to do this a few times. And you need a fast meter. I'll show you right now that this uh, Walmart meter doesn't work. There's a reason professional electricians and electrical engineers and such use fluke meters because they're awesome. <laughs> they really are. So this is set to the lowest DC volt setting, 1.5 volts. I've got it set to hold, so you can see the H. Same exact hookup as all the other meters. There's nothing here. This thing is not fast enough. It's just not going to do it. So. Anyway, that's, uh, that's how we do that. Okay, so here we are with the Mushi meter, and this is a really funny name, I know. But you can see I've got the leads plugged in here. They're still plugged in the same place where they were with the other meters. Right now, this, this meter will capture very fast sampling rates um, from 125 samples a second all the way to 8,000. It's about as fast as a, an oscilloscope. It's really incredible. But uh, I usually, you know, for inrush, I, I tend to set it at about 500, which is faster than you need, really. But uh, let me just set that to min. Now, this is the number that we're looking for here. So 0 0.06914 volts is 690 amps. Now, can we trust the accuracy of this at that current above the 500 amps? Well, probably for this, what we're doing. It's only a split second. And, uh, of course, we're doing sampling at a faster rate than the, the 289 or the 179 at this point. So that's why you're going to see a higher number. That's one of the things I like about the Mushi meter. It is extremely fast. And they're cheap. They're like 135 bucks on Amazon. I'll put a link in the video description so that you guys can find this if you need it. Uh, cheaper than buying a fluke, let me tell you that. And it works really well for this stuff. Reset it there. Now see, that one was only 360 volt, uh, amps. Like I said, it depends every time you, you do it. 400. 710. So, you see what I mean, guys? It's different every time because the motor stops in different positions. It's, it's just, it is what it is. But really, the number that you're looking for is the highest number that you get at any given time. And what you always want to do is make sure that that is below the short circuit current of your battery. Because if you're continually short circuiting your, your lithium ion phosphate battery, you'll damage it. I mean, they have that protection. Many of them built in, some don't. A lot of lithium ion phosphate BMSs do not have overcurrent protection built in. And if they say, do not start a motor with it, don't do it. You know what I mean? Some batteries have good specs, some don't. And most of them don't give you an inrush rating. They do not give you that. They just give you the short circuit current. And the problem is, if let's say your short circuit current is 500 amps, and we just put 719 amps through it, that battery's shutting off. You're not going to start the motor. You're not going to raise the anchor. You're kind of screwed at that point. So anyway, I hope this helps, and I hope it explains it. And this will save you some money using a shunt instead of a, 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 a clamp meter like this. I mean, these are great, and they're handy, but that's a $1,000 meter plus, you know, so. Anyway, hope this helps. Bye-bye.